What's up guys, Pete from the basement here in the Red Stylo Media booth at NYCC. We're here with Enrique Jang and Ryan Morrow. You know his mom. His mother makes these awesome knit dolls for us. For the tiny. I'm peering right Hi, down mom. there. Hi mom. Hi mom. I know you're going to watch this. Now, Enrique, you're the author of one of my new favorite books that came out recently. Before I even knew you guys were responsible for this, I loved The House of Montresor because there's there are two easy ways to get my attention when I'm in a comic shop and I'm seeing books that I'm not really familiar with besides like, you know, Spider-Man and Superman and whatever else. Edgar Allan Poe and H.P. Lovecraft. And the idea of a sequel to The Cask of Amontillado, how did you come up with this? Oh man. Well, you always wonder, like he just sat back in the wall and, and, and he's like, he never asked why. He never asked why. So the question always for me was maybe he knew. He had to know. So I wanted to tell that story and sort of... I have always asked why. Like you, the, the fact of that story that it chimes in, he's already halfway built the wall and the guy kind of wakes up out of this stupor and says, like, what the hell's happening? I'm being walled in. And so basically you just took this slim little pe two pieces of character, these two characters, and built this entire world around them. Why do they hate each other? Where does the rivalry come in? And everything else. Tell everybody about the characters involved. Well, uh, House of Montresor is set 50 years after the events of Poe's original story. And it, like, remember in, uh, at the end of Poe's original story, he says 50 years later, nobody's disturbed this space. So he's telling this story, he's, he's talking to someone, and you don't really know why or, or what he's been doing this entire time. So the idea was to uh, set it 50 years after Poe's original story. Uh, Montresor has taken over everything that Fortunato ever loved. He's uh, married his widow, he's taken over his lands, and there's uh, sort of machinations through the years uh, going on with other members of Fortunato's family. So revenge was not over that fateful night. Uh, 50 years later, there's one uh, last living descendant in the Fortunato family, and Montresor's going to take him out. Let's continue. It, it's, it's kind of funny, almost. You... You almost feel bad for the rest of his family after a while that this guy just came in and usurped everything. Like, it, it, you know, from this one tale of vengeance, it kind of flips around, and this is kind of how vengeance is just like this cyclical thing, and how, you know, they, they'll be seeking revenge after this. Now, any plans to continue this story? No spoilers, you gotta go and read the story. Gotta read the book, gotta read the book. Uh, we do have some sort of creepy crawly plans in the works. So, so, something's gonna come up in the bricks, so we'll see. we'll see. Any other favorite Edgar Allan Poe stories that uh, you might want to chime in on? The Black Cat. I think we'd really like to do, um, but you know, Poe is fertile ground, very fertile ground for, for more, for more work. So, take your pick, take your pick of that. Uh, if I had to pick one, I mean, there's probably not too much that you can throw around with it, but. Uh I mean, you can always do a prequel to Annabelle Lee, of course. You can actually write the love story. Uh, but my favorite Edgar Allan Poe story has always been Descent into the Maelstrom, which is a, kind of a lesser-known story of these two brothers who went out uh, and got caught in a whirlpool, which is actually uh, in between these two islands around Norway, the Moskostrom, which is like the second most powerful whirlpool in the world, if you're not familiar with that one. Good story, guys. And it's only like 10 pages long, so go read it. But, uh, yeah, I guess maybe like a little prequel to Annabelle Lee, because who doesn't love a love story? Who doesn't love a love story? Well, one of my favorite uh, writers, Dirk Manning, says that you listen to uh, love stories long enough, they all become horror stories. So, mm -hmm. you got you got it. Keep going. Oh, the Conqueror Worm is another great idea, and if you can you can extrapolate that one. That, that, that little simple, like, sonnet poem that he did with... Uh, like basically everybody dies and the worm is the winner at the end of the at the end of your life. I saw a movie the other night. Somebody I, I thought it was pretty read up on Poe. Uh, and somebody mentioned a story the other day that I haven't found yet and it's about uh, Poe's uh, a, a, a kid he's sort of like a he's a punk at school and uh, someone shows up at school who looks exactly like him but it's very soft spoken and uh, sort of the human embodiment of his conscience 
but what if you were actually confronted with yourself? And I, I like that idea a lot. So just thinking about exploring just its base a little bit. It's a very existential thing. Like, if would you like you if you met you? If you met you. <laughs> now, Ryan. Yes. Besides just repping your mom's awesome knit yes. dolls, which we love and have loved for years, yeah, tell yeah. us a little bit uh, about your creations. Uh, well, the, the dolls have actually uh, kind of been more like they've subsidized what I've been doing. Uh, I've been going to cons for the last few years, uh, distributing comics through onesquaredstudios.com. I wanted to get into comics because I didn't, I didn't want to get to an age where I thought, what if? So I just quit everything, it threw all my eggs in a basket, and opened up a website. And I wanted to do a website and free digital content because it seemed like I could have a better stomping ground to try out a bunch of different stories. And we have eight titles on the website. Some of them have up to 10, 12 different segments in them. The interface isn't just taking a comic book page and putting it on the screen. It's a little bit more interactive. Um, it's reminiscent of what Thrillbent does where uh, there's still a page turn experience as a reader. When you Every time you click or tap on the screen, you get a little more information. Mm -hmm. The screen eventually wipes and starts over. So it's a bit more interactive than just taking a comic, putting it on the screen in a PDF and having somebody have to squeeze in or guided view. I hated guided view comics. Mm -hmm. I still hate guided view comics. They should stop. That's, that's, it's like a... Like a bad cartoon from PBS. It's just, I don't like it. I, I think that we should, as readers, still be able to flip the page when we need to. Right. And a great thing about that is we can surprise you still. Uh, um, I, I, love, I love floppies. I love a libretto. But at the same time, if Captain America is defusing a bomb over here on the left, out of the corner of your eye, you see... You see what's going on. Yeah, you yeah. see the bombs going off. You know the comic book's called Captain America. He's not dead. You don't care about the next two pages anymore. Right. And rather than have a, a bubblegum ad in between, we can surprise you by having the next click, an explosion can happen. Somebody can get their hands chopped off. Yes, both those, thi both those things do happen in my comics. Um, an one interesting thing that we're going to do is that our comics are coming from the digital platform into the print platform, and their comics will be coming from print to digital. So we're going to be one square combined. Yes, one square exactly. studioing up Red Stylo Media's products. Uh, we're looking at some of the Shakespeare Shaken properties right now, and uh, Poe Twisted. We've talked about Angel of the Bullet, a couple of those, and putting out a few pages in our digital format as a way for people to actually sample the product before getting them over to Red Stylo to order mm. their copies. That's really a good idea. I, before we get into Ah, we've got the crossing, and what is this one over here? This is Cajun Bonsai. This is where things blow up and people lose hands. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a redneck samurai redemption story told in a desolate Louisiana. Tragedy has befallen Louisiana. Yeah. So this is actually the NYCC uh, exclusive cover that we did. Uh, I don't want to give it away because there are things you can read, but uh, there's there's a moment where sometimes matches light. And they get thrown away, and then things happen with them. But yeah, you, you'll see what I mean by it if you go. Who to doesn't love things going splody? Yeah. And yeah. where can they check those out? Uh, right at onesquaredstudios.com. Type in O N E or one. Uh, it'll either one will get you there. The number or the word. And here we've got the crossing. Tell us about this one. Uh, basically, this dude is talking to a ghost girl on in front of an oncoming train. Enrique is all over this one. <laughs> Uh, we wrapped up the Kickstarter for that one a little bit earlier this year. I'm working on it with uh, Alex Cormick. Crossing is the story of the ghost of an annoying goth princess who uh, haunts the rookie train conductor who runs her over. She says that her death was really a murder made to look like a suicide, and she uh, won't leave him alone until he helps solve her case. So, so I mean, that, that's kind of got to make him feel a little bit better. Like, she, she was murdered by someone else, and it wasn't just his mess-up that killed her. I mean, this is his first day on the job. That's a hell of a thing to have what happened on the first day. Worst day ever. No, uh, I think that it kind of just wanted to be a how to lose a ghost in 10 days. There's definitely a battle of the sexes kind of going on uh, in this because he saw her on the track. She was alone. Nobody helped her and train hit her. And actually, the agencies, they budget for this because they know they're going to hit so many people a year. And that's actually part of the emergency. It's part of like what they do. Wow, I never so, that. yeah, so he's uh, excited about his first day on the job as an engineer. But as a conductor, he's actually seen this. What uh, kind of connects them is that uh, she doesn't know who killed her, 
but she knows she didn't commit suicide. So when two people have seen, kind of, they've seen the same thing, but they have such different perspectives, how do you kind of reconcile that? How do you kind of get it? So, wow, that's good. It's, it's fun. Now, is this, when is this book coming out and where can people find it? We were really happy to debut issue one here at New York Comic Con and uh, issue two is forthcoming. So we're going to have issue one for you guys. We're going to have Enrica sign them and we're going to have it for you guys as a giveaway on YouTube and thepeachbasement.com. Guys, best of luck. Thank you for coming on the show and I look forward to finding you guys at every other convention that we do in New York and maybe I can even, you know, travel around. I'm looking to get out of New York for a little bit, maybe see Emerald City and get San Diego. Chicago, C2E2. Come on. I do need to go to Chicago. I hear good things hey. about your pizza and I do love your hot dogs. Well, you guys would you guys would call the pizza stromboli more, but but yeah. I've but actually you, you compared would like, it you would like it. Yeah. I've actually compared it to pizza lasagna. It's like it's just really Right. Hey, Wonderful. Pope needs to come down to Baltimore. That's what you I'll need to definitely do. come you need down to, to Baltimore. Down yeah. Count on you it. You got the pizza, and she's got the po. So you should go to Baltimore times. That's a good enough reason <laughs> for me to start traveling, guys. We'll see you later.